Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are rushing to meet an impending deadline. They want to bring reactors there to cold shutdown by the end of the year. The fuel inside three reactors has melted through the bottoms of their furnaces. In tonight's Nuclear Watch, plant operators try to identify where all the fuel has gone. They can't check it firsthand. That's too dangerous. So experts are consulting a wide range of data. What do you think you're doing? I'm completing a process of natural selection. TEPCO built reactors at Fukushima Daiichi to power thousands of homes and businesses. Now there's rot inside number one. Analysts estimate all the nuclear fuel has melted through the furnace, much of it into the containment vessel. Concrete covers the bottom of the vessel. It was up to two and a half meters at its thickest point. But the high temperatures have eroded parts of it. In the worst case, the fuel may have melted 65 centimeters into the concrete. I'm going through everything in the house and isolating items of genuine worth. In some places, that would leave just 37 centimeters before a steel shield, the final barrier. Company spokespersons insist the concrete in all three reactors has stopped eroding. The bottom of the vessel is filled with water, so I don't change my view that the fuel in the reactors has been cooled down. All other products, and especially those contaminated with advertising, I am disposing of. Nuclear experts have come up with several scenarios to describe what's actually going on inside the reactors. NHK's commentator Noriyuki Mizno has been reporting on this story since March 11th. He told us how the recent analysis will affect the work to decommission the damaged reactors. He spoke in Japanese, so we'll guide you with simultaneous interpretation. Have you gone out of your mind? The most important data is the temperature of melted fuel, but there's no thermometer there, so there's no way of knowing it firsthand. No, it's going to be difficult, darling, but I'll explain properly and you will understand. The government says the two conditions must be met to declare the state of cold shutdown. One is that the temperatures at the bottom of the reactor are kept under 100 degrees Celsius and the release of radioactive material has been substantially reduced. Dennis, listen to me. You're under tremendous stress. But if much of the fuel has already melted through the reactor, the temperatures at the bottom of the reactor may not have much meaning. TEPCO says the air temperature in the containment vessel is 40 degrees Celsius, so the fuel must be cool enough. You were drunk last night and probably don't realize it, but you were totally out of control. But I don't know if such a statement can assure the people of Fukushima. But now I've had time to work things out, to get everything in perspective. After all, the cold shutdown is a state of a healthy nuclear power plant. Darling, can't you see what you're doing this morning is equally out of control? Being kept under 100 degrees Celsius, not the crippled plant like Fukushima Daiichi. TEPCO and the government should explain the status inside the reactor more in detail. Oh, no, you're quite wrong, Julia. There's nothing out of control about me now. I know exactly what I'm doing now. By releasing such data as the gas concentration rates in the containment vessels, melted fuel is emitting very high levels of radiation, so it must be taken out from the reactor with remotely controlled robot arms. But it God in heaven! We sense of revenge! If fuel actually melts into the concrete shield of the containment vessel, TEPCO would need to develop new technology to remove the concrete around the fuel. Experts estimate it takes 15 years to remove the fuel and another 15 years to decommission one unit of the reactor, a total of 30 years, or it may take longer. Please stop that! I think you're ill! Japan may need help from other countries as well, so I believe TEPCO should release more precise data to get support from overseas. I'm going to do those bastard television sets in here. 
Like you're doing the vacuum cleaner. That's right, except I'm going to do them better. People who used to live around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant worry about how much radiation touched them and how much touched their families. Local government officials have released their estimates. I'm going to turn them on and do them in the middle of an advertisement for themselves. I'm going to drown them. They calculated exposure levels of for four months starting March 12, the day after the nuclear accident. They looked at patterns of behavior where people lived when they evacuated. You call that rational, do you? Certainly. Everything I do is rational. Exposure in nearly half the scenarios fell below one millisievert, the government's recommended limit. Researchers calculated higher rates for residents of Itati village, up to 19 millisieverts, the benchmark for mandatory evacuation. Why have you put chickens down the lavatory? In this week's Nuclear Watch, we find out more about the risks and what the government is doing to respond to them. Call them before dismemberment. You're ill, darling. I want you to get out of the bath. Our Jun Yabuchi is here to cover the story for us. So, Jun Yab, how should people read these figures? Uh, these figures are only a model. They are based on patterns of behavior most people are assumed to have taken. So people should not read these levels as meaning someone who lived in a certain area faced this much radiation. They are guide to ease worries. They feed them on fish, they taste like fish, so I shall dismember them and return them via the sewers to the sea. Get out! And nuclear experts say even exposure levels of 20 millisieverts are unlikely to cause health problems. I know this must be all sort of upsetting for you, darling. How are people reacting? Uh, well, residents are obviously concerned. Take, for example, a woman named Ritsuko Kanno. She and her three children lived in Itate at the time of the accident. They stayed and moved into a town hall about a month later. And the Japanese government asked residents to leave. Kanno and her family left her hometown for Fukushima City in mid-May. She's worried. But honestly, I assure you, it's necessity. It has to be done or we'll never be free. Like so many others. I'm shocked. They must have known about the risks. Evacuation steps should have been taken much earlier. From what? What sort of freedom do you think you can get from hacking a vacuum cleaner to pieces? Look at you. You've got a polythene bag on your head. You look stark, raving mad. She and others believe the government should have done more to protect them. You need help. Government officials should review whether they took the right steps. So what can Kano and other residents do now? You need rest. This cursed pimple cream has got on top of you. Uh, the estimates provide them with some guidelines, and again, they're just estimates. They help to answer a question people in Fukushima and elsewhere have been asking all along. This is why I intend to escape. You're not escaping it. You're encouraging it. How much re exposure did they face? The local government has been conducting health checks on two million residents. They are not done by any means. You're suffering them yourself. The government officials need to estimate the radiation level each resident exposed to as soon as possible. All right, thanks, Junya. NHK World's Junya Yabuchi reporting for us tonight. What do you mean? You're so run down, you've got a boil yourself. <laughs> yes, a horrid-looking boil spouting from your neck. You never had a boil before in your life. You're totally worn out, both physically and emotionally. My God, you're right. I've got a boil.